Hi, welcome to this tutorial and demonstration of the procedural NPC crowds from the Unreal Marketplace. So what is this plugin? Basically it allows you to simulate large scale pedestrian crowd systems or even AI crowd systems uh, for animals um, while keeping it extremely performant. So I have some demo content here and the main uh, the main systems for the plugin. And I'm going to go and show you a demo real quick of what it looks like, okay? So as you can see, you have all these AI walking, and you can increase this if you want. Now, this is an editor, so we're not going to have very high FPS, but we're already at 90 FPS with all of these AI. There is not, there's almost no FPS drop. So if we were to go into standalone game or the, the actual like cooked launch version of it from a package game, um, it would be above, if it's at 100 now, it would be at above probably 160, 200 FPS with all these AI. And you can increase this amount too if you're okay with a little bit less performance. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into what's included with the plugin. So we've got the demo content. Now all of this, let me, let me be clear, all of this is deletable. If you're going to use your, if you're going to use your own behavior tree, your own AI character that you already have, and, um then you can delete all of this, okay? If you do want to use the AI character and the behavior tree that I have, it's totally fine. Uh, just keep the behavior tree and the pedestrian folders. Everything else can be deleted though. So with that said, um, let me show you real quick how you would set this up in your, in your own game. So basically what you would do is, I already have one here, so I'm not gonna spawn it as you won't be able to really tell. But I'm going to, in the pedestrian systems, there's a path. Just drag this path in, okay? Drag this path in, rotate, rotate it to the face you want to do, and get the point that extrudes out. So as you can see, there's, there's this point right here. Zoom in a little bit more. There's this point right here. So take that and go to the drag part and drag it out here, okay? The move tool. And then if you want to extend it in either direction, okay, hold left alt on your keyboard and drag it out and then you can do that all around all around okay and you can do it all around as many times as you want and that's basically how you set it up and now pedestrians and path findings and all that's going to spawn um, so i can actually show you real quick so it's going to spawn extra around here because there's, you know, there's a spawner. Um, but that's basically, that's basically how you do it. Um, that's, if you wanna go ahead and skip the rest of the video, you can just put that in there. Uh, but I'm gonna go and show you what the rest of this looks like, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and delete this real quick, okay. All right, so let's get into the first of the behavior tree. The behavior tree, think of these, if you're not familiar with them, think of them like little tick events that have logic on them. So in this case, we're just setting a vector and then moving to it on both of these, okay? These are the um, nodes that come with it. So find next waypoint is its name. Okay, and then there's wander. So these are the two nodes that come with the plugin. This can be used for scaring, um, wandering around in random locations, uh, patrolling areas, okay? Uh, this will be used for pathfinding or any anything that needs them on a set path or procedural path. Okay, so that's that. So basically you set the variable and then you move to it. Now one, the important, one very important thing about the behavior tree is the object to use. I'm using vehicle, but you have all these collision channels. The object to use needs to be the same as the waypoint. Okay, so on the waypoint box slider, this needs to be box slider. This needs to be set to vehicle. So this and this variable need to be the same. Okay. Now for the new waypoint, which is right here, the move to, that's just an empty blackboard key I set up. Same with the random waypoint. Okay. And that's basically how behavior tree works. So it goes, goes from left to right, finds the waypoint, moves to it. And then if this condition is true, activate wandering, you wander it. Activate wandering is just pressing F on the keyboard for demo purposes. Okay. So I'm going to go over the variables in here. Trace distance is basically, think of that like line of sight, like how far can they can the AI see in front of them. Sphere radius, think of that as their peripheral vision. How big is their peripheral vision? If it's something small like 100, they're only going to see a narrow a narrow area in front of them. So 600, they're going to see a big peripheral vision. Okay, 
Debugging is just for drawing the sphere trace that it uses. Object to use, we already went over that. Next waypoint vector, that's the next path point that's going to go here, so new waypoint. Find waypoint is used if they get lost. So we're setting it the new waypoint because we want them to go to the nearest waypoint around them, find the nearest one, and move towards it. So if they're like lost in grass or they're lost in the street or something, they'll move towards the nearest waypoint with this. Okay. Wander, this is a this moves them in random directions. Uh, by the way, both of these are written in C++, but used to be extendable to blueprints. Um, so they're highly optimized, which is how we were getting the 100 FPS in editor with all this AI. Okay, so the random location, this is random waypoint, and this is the wander radius. So the main thing you want to change is if you want them to wander farther away, you want to up this. If you want them to wander in a smaller area, like a patrol in a smaller area, you want to move this down. I'm keeping it at 800 for now. Okay, now there's a couple things for the project settings that we need to do to get this to work. Um, is we need to go down to Crowd Manager, okay, and under Max Agents, set this to something like 2500. It, by default, it's set to 50, and that means that there can only be 50 AI in the level that will operate at a time. So if you have like 150 AI, only 50 of them will be moving, and that will cause a bug. So set this to like 2500. That way, you know, there could be a max of like 2500 AI in the level. Um, that's, that's a lot. You're probably never going to have that many, but just in case, uh, always have it higher. Um, the other ones, leave them at 2500 too. These are for like avoiding different agents and stuff, different AI, different walls. Um, one thing you can do is you can resolve collisions. This will help to make sure they're not stuck, but it's a little bit more, um, a little bit more expensive, but it, it'll make sure they don't get stuck on each other. So I recommend that. Okay, so that's the project settings and the behavior tree. Now I'm going to show you the spawner and the component for it. So I condensed all the logic for spawning the pedestrian based on distance from the player to a single node. Okay. And that is done by adding the crowd spawner component, which comes with the plugin. So when you install the plugin, you'll have this. And then you just type in the spawn pedestrian NPC crowds. It'll give you this node. Now each one of these variables, I'm going to go over them very deep briefly. The distance to spawn is how far away from the player should they start spawning. The max spawn amount is a exponential incrementer. So that means that one would be the default. So that means the default amount spawn. So it'll spawn one AI per spawn point. Zero would mean zero spawn. And then two, three, four, et cetera, increments. Now remember, you're spawning hundreds of AI. So if you increase this to even two or three, it can up, it can up the amount by 100, 200, 300, 400. So just be aware of that, okay? It's exponential. Um, I recommend keeping it at one or two, one or two, okay? Character height, I put this at 94. You can leave it at zero, but 94 will help make sure that the pedestrians don't get stuck in the middle of the ground, because sometimes if it's at zero, they'll spawn and they'll, like their collision will be set properly, and so they'll be stuck in the middle of the ground, which you don't, you know, obviously don't want that. That's a big bug. The NPC to spawn, that's the character, the character class that you have your pedestrian as. In this case, it's the one in the plugin. Procedural separation, you can set this to whatever value you want, but it's going to make the AI spawn further apart and walk further apart. So I'm using 250, 250. Uh, leave the z-axis on zero or they're going to spawn in the air. Spawn rotation, you can leave this at zero, but I, I that's what I do. Um, but this would let them rotate in different directions whenever they're spawning. Okay, this is just running on a timer event. You could put it on tick, but I'm putting on a timer event to make it more optimized. Okay, now that's that. Now the beefy spawner works with the pedestrian class. Okay, so it works with the pedestrian class. So if you were to have your own pedestrian that you made, make sure you add the pedestrian destroyer component and then set up the remove pedestrian um, node on a timer. I'm using a timeline tick, but you can use a timer. Okay. Now distance to destroy or distance to spawn, I named the distance, I need the variable distance to destroy, but you'd want to leave this as the same variable value that you set in the spawner. So in this case, we set it to 8,000. You want to make, you want to make this 8,000 too. So that means that when they get greater, when the distance is greater than 8,000 vectors, they will be removed from the level. And if it's less than 8,000, they'll be put back into the level. And that way you don't have AI running around the whole map, 
10, 10 miles away from you, right? You don't want that. Um, you only want them around the player. Okay, so with this, this is all optional. This is just for the demo purposes of setting that wander uh, bool in the behavior tree. You can delete that if you need to. Um, you can delete this. This is for setting the material to randomize it. You can use the same logic for a skeletal mesh. Okay, so you can change the skeletal mesh so you can have like a bunch of different pedestrians uh, models, which is great. And then of course it does the destroy by distance up here. Okay, so that's the BP pedestrian. And then the, uh, the final thing would be the path. Okay, now this is the thing I showed you earlier. You just drag this into your level and it works. Um, but if you wanted to modify the values of it, that's what I'm going to show you here. So it does all this on begin play. So it spawns everything on begin play. Okay, now distance between waypoints. This is the variable you would change. So right now it's 300. That means that the, the, all the waypoints, the pathfinders in the level from the spline, they're going to be 300 vectors apart consistently. Now if you want this to be higher, you can make it higher, but just be aware that the line of sight for the pedestrians, they might get stuck or lost. You probably won't get stuck, but they'll get lost if they can't find a waypoint. Um, and they're going to have to find the waypoint again by you know moving around the level and stuff until they find one. So just be aware of that. Just be aware that you know you want to keep this at a lower number. Um, for the pedestrian spawners, just to make it you know very populated, I am using the same one, so it's 300. However, you can use your own variable for this, just distance between pedestrians, okay? And this can be like 600, 1,000, 2,000, and this will spread out the uh, pedestrians throughout the level so they're not so jam-packed close together. If you're going through a bustling city vibe, um, I recommend this, but if you're going through like a, a more standard you know level and you only want like 10 ai per per vector like per 500 vectors i would spread this out okay another small thing i wanted to let you know is if you spread this out you can up the um the where is it the bp spawner right here you can up this max spawn amount because they'll be further apart so if we were to make this like three right but we made them further apart. We made them, you know, 2,000 vectors apart. It'll give the same feel, but like they're farther apart. So you see, so we keep the same performance, but we can increase the amount they spawn. So that's a little trick you can do. Okay. And basically that, that is all for this. Um, just remember, just plug the, just plug the, uh, the pedestrian path. Sorry about that, I was thinking for a second. Just plug the pedestrian path in here and spread it out of the level. That is basically how you use it. Um, I just wanted to go over the different, the different, um, you know, content in here. Uh, but that is basically it. One more thing um, I wanted to go over is the optimization and the AI controller. For the AI controller, it, this is this is only if you're using your own pedestrian already and you just want to implement the pathfinding stuff. Um, if you're using your own, make sure that the AI controller that they use is a Blueprint class uh, detour crowd AI controller. It works pretty much the same in, in like standard use. It works pretty much the same as a standard AI controller, but it allows us to um, do things like crowd collision and stuff. And it also is more optimized for high levels of pedestrians. So use that. Um, on, on the pedestrian, we're just running the behavior tree on begin play. Uh, so that's all you got to do in there. And then for the character optimizations, um, a couple things I did was I set this to, where is it? Optimization. So on the mesh, on the mesh, I set it to only tick pose when rendered and enable update rate optimizations. What update rate opti optimizations does is it changes the tick rate based on distance automatically from the uh, animation blueprint. So you, so, you know, if they're farther away, we don't need to, you know, check their speed all the time, right? Or something like that. Okay. Um, same with the character movement. We want to change this to rendered, update only if rendered. This is going to give us a lot of frames per second because a big um, part of the performance is making sure the character movement component isn't ticking all the time. So if we have like, let's say we have 150 AI in the world. We only need to really see the ones that are rendered, right? We only need to see them moving. So you can also, you know, make your own logic for this too with LODs and stuff. But for this, 
if you uncheck this, the performance is going to go down a bit. Not a whole lot. It's going to be about 10, 20 FPS, um, but they will move off screen. So just be aware of that. If you turn it back on, if you turn it back on, um, that's that. So just be aware, um, you know, now we're at 100 FPS, right, in editor. So that's very impressive. So just be aware if you turn that on or off, it will change the performance um, a little bit, about 20 FPS. Another thing you can do is on the mesh, you can go to skip simulating bones. So type in skip and under skeletal mesh. You can turn this off to skip all bones and it should increase performance a little bit. Um, do be aware that if you're using ragdolls, this will glitch out the ragdolls. So keep skip simulating bones on if you're using ragdolls. However, if you're not using death ragdolls or other ragdolls, keep this to skip all bones. That's very important. Okay. Um, so now it's about the same, but uh, it, it stops the physics sim, which helps a little bit. So that's an extra small little thing you can do. I'm going to turn it back on. Okay. The... The, um, the final thing I want to do is there's a note that I wanted to tell you about. Um, on UE5 with 5.02, uh, 5.0.2, if you create a new project from that, I noticed that the, the AI will all be rendered at once. It's some sort of like occlusion calling bug that they have. Um, I'm, I reported it to them, so hopefully it'll get fixed in the next update. Uh, but right now, if you create a new project with UE5.0.2, it might do that. If you have an existing project from 5.0 or 5.0.1, it should work, no problem. But for some reason, when you create a new project from 5.0.2, it does that. So I've already reported it to Epic, so hopefully they can get it fixed here soon. But just be aware of that if you're using 5.0.2, okay, to create a new project. All right, um, that is basically all for the, for the uh, plugin. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try my best to answer them, or you can ask on the Unreal Marketplace uh, questions board. I answer there. Thank you for watching, and uh, the link for the plugin will be in the description. Thank you.